forgive and forget. That's what people say. Does true forgiveness really mean forgetting? Find out. And while you're single TV, the channel for single adults who desire godly relationships. Hello, my name is OJ Tokes. I am the host of While You Are Single and welcome to part three of how to move forward toward godly relationships. Unforgiveness is the reason why some people are unable to move forward into godly relationships. This is what I've been talking about for the past few weeks. If you missed the first two parts of this series, I have links below that can take you to the first two parts of this broadcast. Meanwhile, this is part three of how to move forward toward godly relationships. Unforgiveness, as I mentioned before, is one of the reasons why some people are unable to move forward into relationships. And I mentioned four basic reasons why people find it difficult to forgive. Number one, people think they have to forgive from their own strength and they need God's grace to do that. Number two, People think forgiveness means they have to resume their relationship with the person the way things were before the offense. And again, that's not what forgiveness is. In those cases, they are confusing forgiveness with trust. Today, I commence with the third reason why people find it difficult to forgive. And the reason is that people think when you forgive somebody, it means what they did was okay. It means you're slapping them on the wrist, you're patting them on the back, and letting them get away with something. But that's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not about someone getting away with what they did to you. It's about you getting away from what was done to you. Let me say that again. Forgiveness is not about someone getting away with what they did to you. It's about you getting away from what was done to you. When you forgive somebody, it does not mean you're letting the person off the hook. It means you're letting yourself off their hook. Forgiveness is not about someone getting away with what they did to you. It's about you getting away from what was done to you. The fourth reason why people find it difficult to forgive is because they think when you forgive, it means you forget. Because we use the phrase forgive, and forget. That is not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting. In fact, forgive and forget is not in the Bible. I understand that we're trying to say you treat the person like they never did anything to you, but just for the records, in case you did not understand that phrase, forgiveness does not mean you literally forget. It does not mean that when you forgive somebody, the incident is wiped out of your memory. Besides, have you ever thought about this? How can you forgive something you forgot? Um, well, um, I forgive you because uh, what am I forgiving you for? I can't remember. How can you forgive something you don't even remember? Let me tell you how I knew without a shadow of a doubt that forgiveness does not mean forgetting. In John 20, verses 25 to 27, this was after Jesus rose from the dead. He had revealed himself to the disciples in the absence of Thomas. Then he left their midst. Then later on, Thomas showed up. So in John 20, 25 to 27, the disciples were in the house and they told Thomas, the Lord has risen. And Thomas said, unless I see the nail marks and put my finger where the nails were and take my hand and put it on the side, I will not believe. Then later on, Jesus showed up and went to Thomas and said, see my hands, take your finger and touch here. Take your hand and touch my side. Don't doubt, but believe. And of course, Thomas later believed. And Jesus said, of course you believe because you see me, but blessed are those who I haven't seen and yet believe. But the point I'm trying to make is this. The fact that Jesus mentioned his hand and referenced his side, let us know 
that Jesus did not forget that he was nailed on the cross. Jesus did not forget that he was pierced on the side. Jesus did not forget he was crucified. I thought in Luke 23, 34, that Jesus forgave when he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And Jesus asking the Father to forgive them is the same as Jesus forgiving them because Jesus and the Father are one. So based on a lot of people's idea of forgive and forget, then Jesus must not have forgiven because he remembered, he did not forget that he was nailed on the cross. He did not forget he was pierced. He did not forget he was tortured. He did not forget he was crucified. So Jesus must not have forgiven. But of course, that's not the case because Jesus is the personification of what forgiveness is. He is the perfect example of what forgiveness is. And he remembered that he was crucified on the cross. So when you forgive somebody, it does not mean that the incident is automatically wiped out of your memory. I want to encourage you. Maybe you forgive him from your heart. And because you still remember the incident, you keep beating yourself up saying, man, I haven't forgiven this person. I need help. Relax. Forgiveness does not mean it's wiped out of your memory. May I suggest a new phrase? Instead of us saying forgive and forget, why don't we say forgive and forfeit? Forgive and forfeit. In fact, we shouldn't forget. And don't misunderstand me, I am not saying we need to hold on to offense and hold on to what they did to us because when you hold on to something that was done to you and keep talking about it and keep rehashing it and keep using it against someone, then in that case you haven't forgiven. But yes, when you do forgive from your heart, you can still remember the incident. And like I just mentioned, it's good for us to remember. You know why? Because there are people like Thomas. They don't care if you walk on water. They don't care if you heal the sick. They don't care if you raise the dead. They don't care if you turn water into wine. They don't care if you cast out demons. They don't care if you're the best preacher or the best orator. What they care for is, do you have any scars? Have you been through anything? Until they see that you've been through something, until they see an evidence that you've gone through situations, they will not believe anything you say to them. That's not the best way to believe, of course. It's not good for us to believe certain things until we see the evidence, because what happens is when we are the person who's trying to see an evidence before you believe, you end up like Thomas, the guy who was the last to find out that Jesus had risen. You end up being the last person to find out something that a lot of people have found out way ahead of you. And sometimes by the time you get your evidence, it might be too late for you. It might be too late for the evidence to be useful to you. But yes, God allows us to go through situations sometimes so that we can show those people who want to see that we have been through stuff. We can convince them through our experiences. We can look at them and say, hey, see my hands. Look at me. I've been through stuff. And you can overcome it too. That's why God allows us to go through things sometimes so that people like Thomas can at least, even though it's not the best way to believe, they can see that, yes, we've been through something and they can be convinced that they can overcome. So be encouraged. Forgive. Now that you understand what forgiveness is not, you can move forward into godly relationships by forgiving. Forgiveness is not something you can do on your own strength. You need the grace of God for that. That's the number one reason why people find it difficult to forgive. Forgiveness does not mean you have to resume your relationship with the person the way it was before the offense. And number three, forgiveness does not mean someone is getting away with anything. It means you are getting away from what they did to you. And number four, forgiveness does not mean forgetting. Forgiveness means forfeiting. Forgive and forfeit. I want to encourage you as well. Forgive yourself. Don't beat yourself up over something you may have done. That also can hold you back from moving forward. Reveal the situation to God. Confess it to God. He will forgive you and he will let it go. You should let it go as well. 
So forgive yourself, forgive others so that you can move forward. Let go so that God can let come into your life. Thank you for listening to While You're Single TV. Until next week, take care, stay blessed, subscribe, 